picking up from my last video, I put the idea out that this form of square unwrapping was the highest form of unwrapping. This video is going to go into why. If you take a look at this graph, this is how I view UV unwrapping in the industry. At a beginner level, you'll simply unwrap everything and fit it into the UV space. At an intermediate level, you will start mirroring and duplicating components and push shells to get the most out of the UV space. And then third, experts will start to square out shells. In addition to breaking texture density, there's more on texture density in this video. This video isn't going to go into what unwrapping is. There are plenty of videos out there that explain that. I'm going to go ahead and talk about squaring shelves a little more. Let's get some basic comments out of the way. Number one, I want to make this thing and have it not messed up by having distortion like that. This problem has largely been solved by using modern texturing packages. Distortion is fixed by texturing options like planar projections and projected maps. So yes, you might get distortion if you were to overlay textures in the UV space, but that's really your fault. Number two, I want to unwrap this once and not have to use a second UV for the shadow map. This is quite an uneducated comment. If you happen to look at, at what a second UV looks like, you'll find the shells are actually taken from the first map, from, from the one that you feed it. If they were efficiently squared, they'd actually pack better into the, um, the shadow map. And the resolution for a shadow map is independently controlled, so it's completely disconnected. Uh, three, this final point, perhaps this isn't a static asset. It's a uh, character's arm or a shoulder, and when it deforms, I want there to be detail. So you simply identify the areas of deformation and assign detail more or less to the UV space accordingly. Point number three is really one of knowing more about the asset. It isn't really much of a, a comment, but it is a thing that happens when you're unwrapping for characters especially. Okay, why are people squaring out shells? Really, it's just to get the most out of UV space. It's as simple as that. And to further explain it, I'll just give a quick demo of this head to unwrap. And we can use the character from the last video. We'll just zoom in on the face. That's got a lot of discernible uh, features on it. I'll do a quick check of the base texture density. Uh, this, this one stands in at 11.1 .1 pixels per centimeter. The texture checker value averages all the uh, faces of the selection. So a higher number means more detail. Uh, now let's have a look at this example I prepared using an automatic unwrap. This function is similar to many other applications. It will simply look at the model and assign UV points in 2D space based on the size of the volume of the associated triangle. There are other things that are considered here. It will attempt to represent all triangles accordingly on the mesh and try not to overlap itself. When you run this function, the outermost shelves will be larger than the center ones. It just happens to be the nature of, you know, an automatic unwrap with this particular object. More deformation is required to represent this shell with the defined seams here. So the model on the right, its texture density stands in at 8.6 and uh, compared to the one on the left, it's a 21.9% difference in resolution. You know, there's a lot of unused space here. Really, I just wanted to compare that difference in a very educated unwrap versus your stock standard kind of thing. So there you have it. Square textures are obviously the way to go if you can afford it. And there are techniques within it to get the best out of it. I've noticed this technique in a couple model rips that I've seen by Rockstar, Naughty Dog, and Capcom, to name a few. That's it for this video. Catch you next week.